Today, I'm going to walk you through the basic idea of BIM for infrastructure and then we are going to have a short introduction on what is CV3D and why you should use it in your project. Okay, uh, before we end, we're going to look over some important features that we have in CV3D that are going to help you elevate uh, the product productivity of your project. Okay, uh, so now let's start. Um, if you have been following and joining our previous webinar, you might be familiar with the idea of building information modeling. But for those of you who are, uh, who are new, let me explain to you a little bit more on what is building information modeling. Some of you uh, might think that Building information modeling only cater for building construction because of the word building, right? But uh, that is not true. BIM also cover on the infrastructure as well, not only on the vertical structure, but also the horizontal infrastructure. In fact, uh, the letter B in BIM stands for building, which is a verb that explains the action of work. This is also mean building information modeling can be used and implemented in whatever that you want to build, be it a vertical building or infrastructure. Building information modeling uh, is not a specific software program. It is a streamlined process that allows us to make a better decision about a project design based on reliable information analysis. BIM is an approach to the entire project life cycle, including design, construction, and facility management. So uh, with BIM, you can improve uh, your project understanding and decision making. You can also share and use the same consistent data across the project life cycle, and you can respond quickly to design changes with processes that are much more uh, what we call smarter and faster. Okay, um, BCG and McKinsey go further in defining what digitization means for the construction industry. It is enabled uh, by a fast acceleration of the technology trend driven by cloud computing and mobile technology. So here is the current technology that we have today from having a higher definition surveying, machine learning, uh, industri industrialization of construction, digital collaboration, the internet of things and advanced analytics. With all of this going on at once, it may be a little overwhelming at first, but uh, we as the industry player must always be alert and move along the urbanization and modernization to help us um, stay relevant in our industry. So as I mentioned previously, it's important to recognize the BIM plays, uh, that uh, BIM plays a role in infrastructure too. The gains and benefit can be realized uh, during the design, build, and operate phases of the project. As uh, we all know, BIM is an intelligent model-based process, and it is not just a 3D model. It also serves as a shared resources for information, even for facility or highway and utility network that will later help in uh, decision making throughout the project life cycle. So with BIM, all stakeholders will share uh, intelligent, useful information along the project, and they will also have a better and organized access to the information. This uh, will result in planning, design, building, and managing the infrastructure. Okay, uh, by embracing BIM, civil engineers uh, have a unique opportunity to lead the industry's information, industry's transformation to a more efficient way of working. Uh, BIM allows for earlier design insight and decision making, allowing changes to be made when it's less costly. Because BIM automates uh, the production and coordination of much 
of the construction documentation needed on a project, civil engineer and designer can spend more time on design and less time on tedious resource uh, intensive tasks. So to understand this better, uh, right now on screen, we have a McLemy curve. So the first set of lines that we have on this curve are blue and red line. The blue line stands uh, for the ability to impact cost while the red one is for the cost of design changes. Okay, uh, from the curve, you may understand that uh, making changes earlier is cheaper and more impactful to a project. Okay, next on to the second set of line, we have the black line that stands for traditional design process and the orange one is for preferred design process. Okay, when observed, uh, the amount of work spent in both traditional and preferred design process is rather the same, but uh, traditional project deliveries spend most of their design effort at later stage, which is construction documentation, uh, just when the cost of each changes is high. So uh, in the preferred design change uh, stage, you may see that all necessary changes and adjustments are made in the earlier stage while the cost of design changes are still low as uh, because it is still in the design development rather than in the uh, construction stage. So from this curve, it is significant that the role of BIM, which is uh, the orange one, the preferred design stage, has become a huge help avoiding unnecessary increase in the uh, overall project cost. So uh, in addition, BIM can help civil engineer address business challenges uh, that we are facing today. So the first one is competitive uh, advantage. So with BIM, uh, you can participate in alternative alternative uh, project delivery models and effectively communicate design intent to earn a stakeholder buy-in and this will help you winning a new work. And then the second one is increase profitability. So uh, by um, improving building performance via analysis tools and using visualization and VR to experience your design before they are built, it can help you deliver a higher quality design. Okay, next is reduce business risk. So uh, with BIM, you can reduce error and change order by improving uh, collaboration with engineers and contractors. You can stay on time and on budget as BIM helps you work uh, more efficiently. The last one is hiring and retention. Uh, BIM can help you extend services beyond design and into building operation with model um, maintenance uh, that you, uh, that Okay, here we have phases of typical road and highway project. Uh, we have survey, planning, concept and design, detailed design, and virtual design and construction stage. On the service stage, we can uh, convert high precision survey to detailed topographic data. We can also utilize the automation for data extraction from LIDAR. So uh, survey is the most important phases, which is we will conduct a site walkthrough or depending upon um, the, the project. So this is the first opportunity for the project team to get a look at the extent of the project. So for planning and concept design, we can uh, develop parametric roadway bridge and drainage design. We can also evaluate design alternative and perform analy analysis to optimize design. For detailed design, we can uh, design in dynamic 3D model based environment and we can produce plan that uh, dynamically reflect changes and Lastly, for virtual design and construction, we can uh, communicate the project uh, to owners and stakeholders, and we can also create 4D and 5D simulation. 
Okay, uh, there are some software by Autodesk that carries their own function and capabilities in infrastructure design throughout the phases. For example, uh, in survey stage, the software that involve uh, InfraWork and Recap Pro. Autodesk Recap stands for Reality Capture Recap, and it is a pro working with cloud from, from laser scans. For planning and concept design stage, the software involves uh, InfraWork and 3ds Max. 3ds Max is a software for 3D modeling, animation, rendering, <coughs> and visualization. In detail design, we have CV3D, Revit, AutoCAD, and vehicle tracking where you can enhance your design. And lastly, in a virtual design and construction stage, we use a Recap Pro and Nevisworks. So for today, I'm going to focus on CV3D software only. 